Okay, we are live. Good evening. All right, so I'm just gonna get started so we don't take too much time. So I'm going to paint uh, this lovely lady here. She is, I, seen, I believe is a model from Instagram, but I don't really know her personally. I just thought that it's a nice photo and I really like the angle of this portrait. I saw I can have a lot of good dimensionality to it. And of course, I have her permission to use the photo. And uh, it's funny that because she has a lot of photos, but I decided to use this one. And I think is one of the very important thing that to have a good, to really find a good photo reference before you even start the portrait. Okay, or, or a scenery painting, whatever it is that you choose to do. Okay, anyway, so I'm just gonna get started. Uh, let me know if you have any thoughts or question or anything like that. So I want this to be a sort of nice and relaxing experience for all of us. And saying it should be a relaxing experience Portrait painting is something I'm, it's kind of dreadful for me to do it in a in the live stream because it's quite difficult for me. Right, last uh, last live stream I did a scenery painting of an Edinburgh and. It turns out pretty good, but it was a scenery, so I can you know have some stuff that's off from the photo reference image, and it will still look okay. But a portrait, if I mess it up the proportion, if I don't get the likeness right, it's not going to look nice. So it's definitely a challenge to me, but. I think we'll get through that. Okay. Not a good sign. My pencil already out of the lid. Okay, let me see if I can get new lid on. Okay, there we go. So I'm just like some really fast, loose, long line. I'm trying to figure out the proportion, placement, and everything. I think one of the things that really caught my eyes, besides the angle and the structure of her just wonderful looking face It's also the hair like there's some really nice lighting on the hair and some very delicate details on that so we'll definitely try to get that in so because this is a portrait I need to keep the line work rather light so if it's kind of hard to see it right now I apologize but I really cannot afford to make some very dark mark right now because it's not going to look good if it's going to be hard to erase but what I'm doing right now is trying to get the structure and the proportion so this will be the brow line and the hairline, the brow line one third of that down will be the bottom of the nose let me try to and one serve it down will be the chin. So I made the chin a little bit too, a little bit too long. So I think I mentioned it before. I have tendency to make the, I have a tendency to make uh, the nose a little bit too long. So I hope I don't do it this time. Okay, so roughly the eyes will be here. This will be eyes. There will be another eyes about the middle of the head. Hi, Frederick. Okay, I got 24 people. There's only one person talking right now. So if you're here, do let me know. So let me know where you're from too. So I can kind of know where is everybody. 
So I'm making some mark here. I'm just trying to get some idea of the landmark on her face. Okay. Try to keep it nice and loose right now. I I love portrait, one of my favorite things to paint. But again, it's also quite a difficult subject to tackle. And uh, most of the portrait artists that I know, they are mostly just dedicated to portrait. They might paint some landscape here and there, but they're mostly known for their portrait. So I'm still kind of in the middle of it I am you know I'm not ready to commit it to painting scenery or portrait so I don't know what I want to really focus on yet but as for now I try to alternate between both subjects I want to try to do uh, one scenery painting and then one portrait painting so hopefully, eventually I'll find out. I mean, if I'm going to be known for bows in the future, like Sergeant, that will be amazing. But I, yeah, I do not dare to dream that big. I mean, if you know Sergeant, he's mostly known for his watercolor. I mean, known for his oil portrait. But he does some amazing watercolor as well. Hi, Jim, Florida. Wow, you're in the Eastern time. That's pretty late for you. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, I know this time is more difficult for people in the East Coast. So if you are here, I am extra grateful. If you need to bail out in the middle of it, that's totally fine. I'm going to let YouTube record this whole scene and uh, hopefully that will be you can come back and enjoy it later. But if it end up horrible, I'm just going to delete it from YouTube. And uh, you guys can all pretend you didn't see this. Certainly hope not, though. But, okay. And the nose, I think. Yeah, again, I think I make the nose a little bit too high. Again, I think I just really have that problem for some reason. You would be anxious on how the portrait going to turn out. Isn't life stressful? Yeah, I just keep saying that I am. <laughs> I am pretty stressful, but I don't know. Hope you, hopefully, you guys cheering me on so I can actually finish this rather in a rather acceptable and that was a decent painting. That would be great. All right. Well, practice make perfect. And one, some, um, one point, at some point in the future, I do want to have a portrait class. So, I think it's better to start practicing doing this live now. Okay, get some hair in. Again, she has some wonderful, beautiful hair. And this portrait will be a little bit tricky lighting wise because that um, is mostly backlight. See how bright her hair is in the photo. So her face is actually mostly in the shadow. It's still pretty bright because it's in a nice sunny day. There's a lot of ambient light and a lot of bounced light. I don't know when she took this photo, does she have a photographer that actually have a system having like a bounce um, screen there but it does look like she her face is receiving a lot of bounce light so I think this can actually work pretty well in watercolor because watercolor portrait is not really suitable for very contrast lighting at least for me um, when you have like very dramatic chiaroscuro lighting I think most of the time that's more suitable for oil Okay. Bottom of the nose and chin, in between that, in the halfway is the bottom of the lip. 
So we get that in. Hi, Eric. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm reading the message. Hi, Ira. I'm like saying hi to myself. It's pretty funny. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Sunly. Sanyo, yeah, Sanyo. I try to pronounce it. I apologize if I don't get it right. I'm horrible with pronunciation. Okay, so, okay, that's a lot of fuzzy lines and stuff. But notice, I don't really do a little hairy line like this. Okay, I just keep my pencil on the paper to really try to build that. Really try to build that, build that form out. Okay. Let me step back a little bit and really look at the portrait as a whole. You guys are looking at an angle, so you know, there will be a little bit of angle skew. I do apologize for that, but I'm not able to set the camera directly in front of my face. <laughs> that would be really awkward for me. All right. Chilly here in New York. It's getting cold in Seattle as well, but... We actually have a very nice f autumn. I don't like to say fall because it sounds kind of depressing. Autumn. We have a pretty nice autumn. It's a, a much warmer than last year. And the beautiful fall tree leaves and stuff, they, st they stay on the tree for a lot longer this year. So... I mean, it's getting cold, that's for sure, but we are really enjoying the scenery. And it's actually not that cold compared to last year. Last year, it gets freezing very, very early. Okay, so I am doing what I like to call anchor points. So maybe like the tip of the nose, like coming down here and uh, the nostril, let's just make a little bit of mark of indication. Let me zoom in a little bit actually. Okay, so a little bit darker mark here and uh, get that eye in. So her iris around here okay. and it's a little bit Eyelid wrapping around her eyes. Okay, a little bit dark mark here. So when you are drawing the anchor point like this, don't outline everything. Okay, we are not making a coloring book. We are doing a drawing for a painting. Okay, so. Usually eyebrow, I just kind of leave it be. And uh, the eye is the part that I do want to make some darker mark. Okay, the corner of the eyes, this is definitely like an important part. And uh, underneath here. Just, okay, the iris here. Her pupil, I like to put the pupil in so it doesn't feel like she's flipping her eyes all wide and stuff. Okay. She can't go around with value in the right place. <laughs> I hope I won't, I won't mess it up. Alright, so. I still feel her nose is a little bit too long, just like... I think I'll raise her nostril just a little bit. I think that might make it look a little bit better. I don't know why I always make the nose a little bit too long. Just... I mean, seriously, I have no idea why. I just always keep doing that. Okay. So the corner.
corner of the mouse here. Let me darken that just a little bit and uh, okay, make sure they line up correctly. Okay, there's a little bit of angle here. So also the corner of the mouse need to line up correctly. You don't want her to like, you know, kind of smirk. Have the mouse tilted for no reason. Unless she is really smirking, then maybe I'll do that. But she's not. She just kind of subtly open her mouth and kind of relax. Very natural looking. Okay. Alright. Okay, so. We, I think we're at a pretty good place now. Um, a little bit of neck and uh, go down to her chest area and I think the rest of it we can keep it very loose okay I mean, this is not going to be a very detailed portrait so and her hair okay let's go back to the overall view okay so there's a lot of details here but I don't see I'm going to do use the drawing to do that I'm just gonna roughly indicate those and let the brush do most of the work this part I will probably have a little bit of indication of light and shadow but again I don't intend it to be a very detailed painting. I do want some light and shadow going on here in the hair though, so I'll just kind of roughly indicate where the shadow is going to be. Okay, now drawing is mostly done, so I'm just going to use my gum eraser, knit eraser, hi Jasmine, and I'm just going to like very lightly go over it. So all the loose line that I put in the beginning will be erased. They are very, very lightly drawn. So I will be able to remove them with quite a bit of ease. And all the line that I put darker mark to, all the anchor points will remain. And those are really the thing that I need for the painting because I don't really need all the construction lines that I did, just the anchor points so that when I paint, I have a pretty good idea where things are. Okay, so this live stream, I plan to just finish the whole portrait at once. So at some point, I will probably need to use a hair dryer to make this dry a little bit faster. Usually what I do with a portrait is I do a drawing and then I do the first wash and I just leave it maybe for overnight, maybe for a couple hours and stuff and do something else and come back. But I think for this one, I don't want you guys to wait for another live stream. So I think I'll just try to, I will just try to finish it all at once. Okay, so the hair is kind of important. The hair is here, it's like almost starting to cover her eyes. Okay, here we go. That's the drawing right here. I think it looks okay. So I'm going to start do the very first wash. Do a little bit final check here. Like everything is okay. I don't need that line here. Just gonna erase that. All right. So here's my palette for the portrait. I have a different palette for scenery because I most of the time when I do a portrait, I do want to start off with a cleaner palette because portrait, unlike scenery, you don't want a lot of um, dirty gray color especially for like a nice looking female like this you don't want to have like a dirty skin tone okay. 
otherwise she's not going to like it okay so here's my warm pile as you can see all the colors are warm and here's my cool pile basic my skin tones are very basic cadmium orange cadmium red a little touch of cadmium yellow okay keep keep it red for the most part you don't want the color to be very yellow a very yellow skin tone look like zombie you don't want that okay so there's not there's no highlight on her face okay there's no like really bright highlight if you look at her face and you look at her white shirt look at how bright her white shirt is on the left side where the sun is hitting and her face is almost completely in the shadow so while there are going to be some value changes we are not going to have highlight here so what that mean is I can pretty safely just paint over the whole thing. This is the part that you don't want lots of hesitation. Just do it. Okay. Just cover it up. It's okay. Paint outside is fine. Paint over the hair. Hair is a little bit darker anyways. So just, just do that. Get a nice coverage. You can leave the eye wide if you want to, but it's not always needed. So, cerulean blue. It's a nice cool color for the face. So I'm just gonna add that in here like so. There's quite a bit of cool color here. So do that while it is still wet. I need to work fast, so. This doesn't dry out. Okay, just some water and we'll just soften this edges. Okay, soften this edges to kind of keep it light. This is a number 10 Kulinski brush. Okay, need a little bit of warmth here. So I'm just going to put that wet on wet. A little bit of orange down here. Okay, a little bit too red. I'm going to add a little bit of orange here. Okay, great. Nice skin tone. All right. So just all the way down to her chest area down to her collar all right okay soften that edge oh vancouver that's where that's my time zone so i am visiting vancouver this thanksgiving so it will be fun Actually, West Vancouver is where my wife came from. She used to live there. Okay, I think I leave a little bit too much white here. Uh, don't know if this is too late to fill that in. I sh probably shouldn't have done that. Okay, I think it's still looking fine. Okay. Okay, that part looks kind of ugly. <laughs> But I think it'll be fine. I'll just I'll just press on. Okay. And I think since we're working on the first wash, just to save some time, I'm going to paint some light first wash for the hair. So a little bit of yellow ochre. Cadmium yellow. Touch of orange, I think. Let me see how that looks. Okay, I think that actually looks fine. It needs to be a little bit redder, though, so I'm gonna add a little bit of red. Okay, so she, her hair got this nice red shade to it. Hi, Rachel. 
from Philippine. Wonderful. I've been to Philippine when I was a kid, but like, I haven't been there for for ages. I do have friend from uh, from Philippine here. Wonderful people. All right, so okay, I'll leave some white, and I'll just soften this. Mixing a little bit of burnt sienna. This is the part what I like to call painting the light. Okay, I'm not painting any shadow right now. This is not shadow. This is not even form. This is just painting light. So everything that you see, every color that you see in this world is made with light. Right, your your eyes are receiving light, so everything that you see, clean water, will be just light. So what I'm painting right now is just the light. Okay. So just the color of the light. I'm not painting shadow or anything, nothing like that. Just the light. I think although Carla only I don't know her. Sorry. I mean I hope I know, but I don't know who you're talking about. Is she an actor is she an actress or or something or a known character? Makes somewhat of a cool gray color. Okay, so again, okay, it's not light and shadow. I'm just painting a different color of the light, and that's about it. Okay, so I don't want to waste a lot of time. Um, to do more later. Oh. <laughs> yeah, somewhat of a weird area right now, but I think we can tie that up pretty easily. It's the thing about first wash, stay relaxed on that. You don't want to give yourself too much pressure when it comes to the first wash. It's Really not that big of a deal. As long as it's clean, you don't have weird edges and weird cauliflower edges and stuff, it you'd be looking fine. Okay, let's see how that looks. Okay, well we definitely got some color of the light. Still kinda of drying, so I'm going to use hair dryer. I will mute the microphone. So you're not gonna hear it. Let's just go to the second wash. Let me see if I can move the camera a little bit more towards the center. So it might be a little bit easier for you to see. I think that's the best I can do right now. I mean, 
when we finish the painting I'll definitely show you the the end like right? that's this is more like the right angle but anyways okay so I zoom it in so you guys can see a little bit better all right so it looks really weird right now I understand and uh, like if you got my email notification like like the subject I don't know if I can pull this off but we'll see let's, let's just press on and see if it ends up okay it's one of the thing about watercolors you gotta have some faith okay if I do all that I can let's hope for the best so I will start with just the this eyes the eye okay a little bit too dry start with the eyelash okay. okay I want to keep it nice and warm but quite dark though so maybe F. okay very careful and kind of delicately put some a little bit lighter but quite warm here okay I think it might be a little bit too wet but we'll just go with it anyways okay that connects to that and uh, okay that creates a nice form here oops sorry Let's see here. I soften this a little bit. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of this cool gray here. Her eyes are blue, but we'll go deal with that a little bit later. Okay, I think right now I mostly want to start to model her eyes a little bit. Okay, so it's quite cool here, so I think it's time to add back some warmth. So, okay, got some nice, there's like a plank here. Okay, and then we, let's, Another plank here, and it's almost stamp brush. Let's connect the shape here, this two here, and we'll soften the top here like that. Okay. So a little bit cool here. I will connect that in. And here we go. Um, I'll wait for this to be a little bit drier and I'll start to put in the eyebrow. Okay. And uh, lower eyelid. This is important to give her some form here. Again, two here and we just give it, connect that with just water here. Okay, so, all right, I'll use a little bit of cobalt blue and mix with a little bit cerulean blue so it's a little bit warmer blue okay let's finally start to give her eyes a little bit of color now 
Try to keep it loose. Don't fill everything in. Okay, let me like keep it light. Okay, I'll get some of the paint out with a dry brush. Okay. to soften this edge a little bit and also uh, this I don't want to I don't want to leave everything hard this I can leave it hard because it's a nice I think it's a nice surface change okay I think this is a little bit too orange let me see if I can Got it out. Okay. I think that actually works out nicely. Okay, so this is actually a nice star. I actually quite like it. I just need to kind of keep it up. Okay, so I'll go back to this kind of dark pile. Let me actually mix it down here. So this is probably be mostly be nice and transparent. I want to mix darker color, I'll move it down here. So, okay. A little bit of red, just to keep things a little warmer. So, let's work on her other eye here. Okay, so, think this I want to keep it just a little bit lighter. Even though in the photo they are pretty much the same value, but I actually want to make it a little bit lighter just, just to kind of give it, establish a little bit more, what should I say, um, a little bit more depth here. Okay, so there's like a fold of the eyelid. I want to put that in as well. Okay, let me actually paint this in. I want to give her a little bit of plane. Okay. Okay, damp brush will soften this. this mark kind of fade off in here. Okay, grab some blue color. So this is the second wash. Okay, so we don't need to go full value just yet. We start to establish some value, but mostly just make some color a little bit more intense. Oops, sorry, keep hitting the camera. So I think this is, this is mostly looking pretty good. Okay. Okay. All right, I think the eye is looking pretty good. Um, I can add a little bit of the eyebrow now. This was a little bit tip of the brush, just defined it. So when we're doing something like an eyebrow, very important to note that, make it soft, make it part of the face instead of really trying to paint the entire separate shape. Okay, so see I have her eyebrow, okay, and all the way here. And at the end of the eyebrow, I'm just gonna lose it here. And soften this a little bit, so it's not all 
hard edge. Okay, so it belongs to the face. It's not like somebody put a tape and just tape on it. Okay. Our next stop, we will paint her nose. I think nose very importantly. If you keep the nose warmer, it will kind of project out. So I think let's have that and uh, the side plane of the nose here. Try to think of the shape, the form of the nose here. I think we're gonna use a little bit of Carmi here. This nice purple plumish looking color. This is just mostly clean water. I'm gonna soften this edge so it kind of just fades off. Okay, fade it off, fade it off like that. Okay, good. Okay, dry brush, pick up some of this paint here. Okay. Okay, the bottom of her nose, let's paint that in. Okay. We'll deal with her nostril a little bit later. It's worth noting that don't make a huge deal out of the, don't make a huge deal out of the, the nostril. It's really not that big of a deal. Like if you make the nostril too dark, it's really not a pleasant thing for, for a female portrait. Okay, I think this is a little bit too dark. This, that does glass me English is not my first language. Glass, glassing, glazing. I'm not sure what you're talking about, I'm sorry. Let me see if I, I hope I don't take too much time on this because I actually want to extend this value down a little bit. Yeah. Continue that down. So this is a very, very tricky portrait because everything is in the shadow. So there are some separation in value, but keep it minimum. Okay. So there is some nice, cool, shape here okay now i'm going to clean water dry my brush a little bit and just soften this soften that away soften this okay I'll... I'll keep i think this I think this looks nice as a hard edge. I think the rest of it, I'm just going to leave it as is. Add a little bit more here, I think. This, yeah, I think this, this will look better. Yeah, glazing. Glazing is, you do like a big wash over a big surface. Like when you do that, um, you kind of tint the whole thing with a single color. So that's why it usually means if you want to make something darker and things like that, as you know. Okay. I've been doing a lot of um, smaller parts. Need to give myself a little bit of break. So let's put some value back in here and so a little bit more red and orange color. I'm not going to use um, like a darker earth tone, like burn on burn and stuff. It's really not called for that. I just really want to make it just a little bit more opaque to get that value in. A little bit of karma here, I think, will look nice. Okay, 
Okay, so a little bit bigger brush. So Carmi here and uh, a little bit of orange down here. Okay, this is really transparent. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm using a good amount of water. I mean, not too much water to a point it start dripping, but keep this quite transparent. Okay, I think that little tint of um, hybrid from Brazil, keep this, give it this like an overall reddish tone, actually make this look a little bit more neutral, so less weird now. So I'm definitely counting on that, so. Let me use Carmine and give her a nice blush here. Look at a beautiful Carmine color. I love using Carmine when it comes to giving like a blush tone to the face. Okay. A little bit of orange. Very quickly add on to that. And I'll clean my brush a little, dry my brush, and I'll just soften this edge right here. I just want to give it some subtle color change. Okay, can bring this over though. So this is the part I'm kind of figuring out what to do while painting. A little bit dangerous, but I think painting a portrait always is kind of like that. There's a lot of intuition going on. A lot of decision in the fly, so that's why I do a lot of practice, so a lot of things you kind of just intuitively know how to do it. Okay, a little bit orange here. Let me see if I can adjust my camera a little bit. I'm really not liking the angle that I'm showing you right now. So let me see if I can make it as tall as possible. And then tilt it down. I think this is the best I can do for you. Okay, still a little bit of angle, but I think it's a lot better. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of unfortunate I'm not able to give always give you the perfect angle because like, if I can set my camera up here, that would be great, but the camera is kind of heavy, so I don't think that would be a smart thing to do. Okay. Oops, what am I doing? So let me see. All right. I'm kind of looking at it to see what I should be doing right now. Okay, I think I'll continue on with her nose. Now her nose looks kind of nice. We have some basic form, but we can start to enhance that a little bit. Um. Let's do some nostril, but again, let's not make such a huge deal out of nostril. Okay, see how dark it is in the photo. We're not going to do the same thing. All we need to do is to give a little bit subtle value here. Like that. To suggest that, hey, look at that. There's a little bit going on in here okay a little bit of that and then it's a nice damp brush and just soften that okay and there we have
have we have a nice nostril shape here and i think that's all we need to do we can add a little bit of value here this gives the nose a lot better form okay side of the nose is bring that playing in a little bit okay this is the part that understanding the anatomy of the face is important you want to know how the structure sort of work so you can have a nice convincing looking portrait First time here, welcome. Well, how do I say your name? She cat. Hope I'm pronouncing it right. I really apologize if I don't. Okay, so let's give this just a little bit more red here, just to let it pop out a little bit more. Okay, I actually like to keep this a little bit hard edge. That'll be good. Okay, so her lips. Let's give her some lip color, shall we? So some carmine, some orange. So we have like a nice, um, cool pinkish color. Okay, so. Can I zoom in a little bit more? Okay, there we go. So the lip, uh, the lip, such an important part, but a huge part that a lot of people overdo. Okay, here's the lip right here. And I'm gonna playing here. Okay, slowly but steady. Okay, and we just establish that lip. Let's soften this part a little bit so it fades off like that. Here we go. Face off. Face. Fade that off. And then you'll have another part down here. Okay, looking good. And the bottom of the lip, also very important, but also so many people overdo it. Treat it as a couple planes. One plane here, another plane here. Okay, let's make this a little bit more here. All right. And very quickly, nice damp brush and we'll soften this. Let it phase off. Very, very important to let it fade off. You don't want it to be a cutout shape. Okay. If you go to the mirror looking at your own lip, there's a slightly soft transition from the lip to your skin. Okay. A lot of people, when they paint lip, they start to really give it a hard edge and make it look like a like it's wearing a lipstick. And maybe she is, but that's not how we want it to look. I want it to look as natural as possible. We don't want it to look like it's, it's like a cutout. That it belong to the face. Okay, and uh, her eyes, her mouth slightly open. So there's some shadows here, a little bit of shadow here. And a little bit of water, damp brush, soften that shadow in. There we go. Look at that. Okay. 
Are we good? You guys are still with me? It's going rather well. I'm pretty happy with it right now. Okay. All right, as we just did the lip, and let's add a little bit more general form to it. Okay. So the way I approach porches, kind of a little by a little, and come go between features and overall structure and uh, not everybody approach the same way some people do like an overall shadow first and then work on the feature um, I don't know why I kind of like to work from eyes and out I think Charles Reed does that and I think when I first learned to do portrait with watercolor I I watch his tutorial quite a bit I mean, his portrait is a lot more stylized and loose than, than mine, but I still learn quite a bit from, from his, uh, his DVD and tutorial. I never get to took his class though, so I'm pretty sure there's stuff I can learn, but what my friend told me is that he's getting really old and uh, his hearing is, is, is going away, so don't know if he's still doing workshop. Maybe if I get a chance, I will go to his workshop or something, but I think I have a pretty good grasp on the portrait with watercolor right now. So I am not sure I will do that, but it will definitely be a nice, interesting experience. Maybe not just maybe not learn how to do what um, portrait, but just to meet him in person. Because I really like his painting. It's very loose and very stylized. Okay, almost 10, so we're almost at one hour mark. If you're still with me, thank you. If you're not, I hope you have a good rest of the week. And hope you do come back and visit later. But if you're still here, let's, let's press on. Okay, so I'm giving it a little bit more value on her eyebrow. But see, just a little loose mark. Okay, and again, we'll just... Soften this edge here right now. I actually don't want to do it here. Be gone. Okay, just use paper towel and press it out if, if it's still wet. You can you can you can do that very easily, okay? If it's still really wet. Hello from friends. Hi. Uh, bonjour. Is that how you say hi? Okay, I'll try to remember. <laughs> okay, so let's give her a little bit of eyelash. Okay, so it's very clearly that she's wearing mascara. Okay, I'm, I'm you know, I'm not gonna pretend she's not. So I'm not going to go too overboard on that. I mean that this is, you know, I don't want to make her look like a clown. So, but so just a little bit of hint on that. I think this is this is good enough. Okay, she's wearing a mascara, and which is beautiful in in the photo. But okay, I'm I'm trying to do a painting, so. So I'm just making her, her eye lid a little bit thicker. I think that will that will do. And I think it's time for us to uh, to give her eye a little bit more color here. I think a little bit of ultramarine blue will just give us a darker blue color. Okay. Hey, Renee's. I've never been there. 
There's so, so many places in this world that I want to visit. I'm sure one day I'll get to do that. Okay, so nice. It's a beautiful blue here. So, okay, so it'll be a little bit darker on top and more transparent in the bottom. So I'm gonna do is to There you go. I think her eyes pops out a lot more now. Okay. Okay, we need to make this a little bit deeper here. Otherwise, it still feels kind of flat here. Okay. Oh, Stan Miller. Yeah, I think I know him. Well, I don't know him personally, but I know his work. Yeah, his work. Yeah, his portrait is great. Definitely a lot more. Um, definitely a lot more realistic and detailed than mine. Um, like it's not that I don't want to do very detailed portrait. I just don't have the patience for it. Okay. I think her eyes just kind of sparkle now, which is great. I... Okay, let's finishing up her eyes a bit. So give a little bit of form here underneath. A little bit more warmth here. Some dark on the side here. Okay, on the bottom, the iris, and we just get that in. All right. Let's give the lower eyelid just another go. Okay, I really want to make this eye deeper. Okay, and yeah, I really need to make this eye a little bit deeper, otherwise the, her face looks rather flat here. I think this is now looking a lot better. Okay. Okay, a little bit of um, burnt sienna. I think I need to just give the underplane of her nose another touch. Thanks, Ira. It's actually too good to kind of give myself a little bit of this kind of pressure so I don't really overwork this. And uh, yeah, because if I overwork this, it will start to look dead very, very quickly. All right, let's, okay, let's give it some punch. Not physical punch, I mean, in terms of value and color. Okay, I don't want to punch her in the face. That will be very rude and unkind. But like the corner of the mouse here, 
Let's give her some nice punch here. So this immediately really start to bring out the form here. Okay, a tiny bit of that, a tiny bit of that. No dabbing, please don't do this, okay? One stroke at a time. Sing twice before you put it down. And then just really delicately put that in, okay? Make every brush stroke mean something. Give it a little bit of meaning. That's the only way to make a nice clean watercolor. Okay, bring that shadow, soften that shadow down a little bit. Okay. A little bit too wet here. Let me use a dry brush to pick that up. Okay, so I seen the tees. I'm just gonna keep it the way it is. I'm not going to paint all the seams in the tees, and you know that's not going to look nice. Hi, Mohammed. Mohammed. Who's saying, okay, Mohan. <laughs> All right. Okay, I think we work on the face quite a bit. I don't know if I need to add any more contrast to it. I do need to, this part feels a little bit flat. So I do think we want to give it a little bit of value here. A little bit of Carmine here, I think, would be nice. So I'll soften this, but I kind of like to keep this a little bit of sharp edge, just kind of to, should I? Mm. Yeah, a little bit in. So this, see when I do portrait is really different from scenery. I'm like getting, I'm getting very careful. I'm just kind of slowly building things up rather than doing a huge wash and really quick brush stroke everywhere. It's just like a, such a different feeling. I mean, I like it, I really enjoyed it. It's just very different feeling. So I kind of need to uh, interchange alternate between portrait and portrait and scenery so I can get a nice balance of uh, slowly build up painting versus like a huge um, huge sketch painting I don't know how to explain it but I think you get you can you can you get it you get what I'm saying But that probably means that portraits are a lot more boring to watch. Okay. Okay. Let's give this tiny bit of form here. Separate that nose. I can soften that. Make every brushstroke mean something. Yes. That's why mindlessly dabbing is not a good idea. Okay, don't ever do that. If you're a part of my class, you hear me say it so many times. Don't do mindless dabbing because repetitive brushstroke is a killer of a paint of a nice painting, and also. If you keep dabbing on it, you are not giving watercolor a chance to paint itself for you. 
Okay. Just put it down, give it a little bit area to, to run, and then rest of it. Just, just let it do its thing for you. The more you work with cut watercolor, the more you know to leave to alleviate some of the responsibility and the work to watercolor is itself. So when you get to know watercolor a little bit more, you're definitely able to know what to do when it comes to painting. Okay. I work on the face enough. I think it's a good place to take a pause on that. Let's do some. Uh, I don't know. Maybe on the background. Not on her face though. We'll keep her face right, nice and clean. Okay. I think it's a good time to start doing some, some hair. Okay. So let's just. For her hair, I always like to be a little bit, a little bit crazy, I'll say. So nice, thick mixture. Okay, a little bit bluer here. I'm just going to bang. Okay. This is going to be amazing step because you will very soon see giving her hair is going to make her whole portrait a lot more anchor. It's going to anchor her whole face down. If I don't mess it up, that is. Okay, so let's have that. Continue that down. Okay, so I think while it is still wet, I want to give it some nice warm, dark warm here. Okay, there we go. Some dark warm here. So we can have a little bit of transition between the hair and the skin. Okay, so like right here. Okay. And uh, let's just soften this. So it blends into her skin tone. So the hair actually grow up from her scalp. Okay, it's not going to be like some cut out hair putting on her head. Okay, so I want a nice cool color here. Okay, I'm going to be a little bit careful when I paint this. This is a good chance for me to kind of fix her face silhouette a little bit, but as you can see, we already start to see some nice form coming up. All right, I think I need to start to warm some stuff up. Oops, just do some. Warm color mixing here, some orange. Okay, do this all while it is still pretty moist. Okay, so I can Next, some of the shadow here. Okay. All right. I think we should soften some of this. So not everything is going to be a really 
heavy cutout. But also, I think it's a good time to add some delicate detail here. Now, I'm not going to paint individual hair string like a madman. It's not going to end up well, but a little delicate hair strain. So, a little bit of nice twirl on her hair. Okay, there's a lot of detail here, so I'm not going to try to replicate everything. Okay, but I'll definitely do my best to capture the essence of it. Okay, I might need just a little bit more water. A little bit darker paint here. Okay, this goes down like so. Okay, nice and quick brush stroke like that. Okay. This is kind of fun, it's almost graphic-like. Um, if you know Muka, I love how he treats the hair. It's almost like graphic. Okay. So I'm using a rough paper so it'll leave some what is it? Um, the texture of the paper here, but I think it'll be fine. Put the picture, put the link of the picture in the description. Um, yeah, I mean, I can, I can link her Instagram. But yeah, if you want, I'll, I'll, I'll try to do that. Okay, so let's finish up this part. trying not to make it too complicated so I think I'll make this just a little bit simpler so a few things go me coming across that and we'll just stop here behind her neck and her chest area I think this is good Okay, the other side. <clears throat> Seeing the other side will... Okay, I like to put nice blue here just to kind of give it a little bit color interest here. Okay. Seeing the other side we will, you know, keep as much light as possible. But at the same time, we'll try to keep it loose. Yeah, definitely go to sleep if you can. I mean, I understand it's not a it's not the best time for the for the east um, for the east standard time. So for the east coast time. So yeah, go to sleep and the, the recording will be ready for you. Okay, I think I'm I'm going to keep this recording because I don't think it's going to end up that horrible. So. You guys can come back and review that. It is Da Vinci. 
um, Kolinsky brush. So having a good brush for that kind of brush work is definitely very important. Okay. Okay, and this I'm going to try to keep it loose and not planning to do a lot of detail on that. So how this looks kind of graphic looking okay and then this part I'm just gonna make it dark 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 um, I'm gonna add a little bit blue even a little bit lizard and crimson I need some more mixture though it's not enough Thank you. Although I don't know if I really have a style just yet. I mean, I'm trying to do what I think is is good, but um, yeah, style. I'm I'm not sure. <laughs> I have a style just yet. I mean, it'd be nice if this is an actual style, but yeah. But if in terms of how I approach a painting and how I interpret a painting yes I can I guess you can say that I do have some personal touch to this so thank you okay uh, not to say not to mention the people on the East Coast, I'm getting tired myself. I, but this is rather a, a more relaxing stage, so it's not going to be that bad. Okay, her hair nicely curved and resting on her shoulder. And this is really beautiful. And again, I think I'm going to in some nice delicate hair strength like that okay nice and graphic looking okay I'm not going to try to make it completely realistic I mean it's not how I do things and I'm not able to do that anyways can I scratch this out to have some hair strength okay Might not be the best idea, but okay. 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 <clears throat> Sorry, I'm gonna have a nice transparent, kind of orange brunette looking color here to give it some nice transition from dark to light. And, uh, yeah. okay. <clears throat> keeping things nice and transparent here. And, uh, I think that will be good for the hair, so... Let me zoom in out. Sorry, you can't see that, don't you? Okay. Okay, see I need a little bit of wet edge here. So not everything's looking super rough. But down here, her hair, I'm just going to kind of loosely suggest it and, and let it be. Okay, 
me just water. Too much piano, sorry. Because I don't want to make it too quiet. So when I'm not talking, although I think I try to talk a lot, a little bit too much. I'm trying to add something a little bit more interesting for you to listen to. Okay, yes, I'm just gonna lose that into the light. I actually quite like this painting. Okay, I just turn it down a little bit, okay? Hope that is okay for you. Everybody asks for different things. Some some people say, ah, add more music while you are not talking. And some people said, like, don't add music at all. So it's hard to please everybody. Sorry. I mean, I definitely listen to all the suggestions that people giving to me. So like, you know, I try my best to accommodate to everyone. I learned very early on I can't please everybody and like not everybody like my painting as well. I mean, I actually got hate email before, which is amazing because I never really talk down to anybody or something like that. But I actually got an email before. Um, I forgot from who because I, I don't I don't really care and remember those people's name. But like I got more than one email. One person said I should learn better English which I do apologize. English is my second language. And the second email I got was like, oh, you're just trying to copy Joseph's book, Bitch's painting. And your painting looked nothing like his. And I completely agree because he is my mentor. So I'm actually glad my painting reminds him of that. But yeah, <laughs> But of course, my painting looked nothing like him. First, we're different people. And second, he's my mentor. I'm still learning a lot of things from him. Anyways, a little bit of a side story. Yeah, I don't let it, I don't let it bother me. I'm just like, you know, it's, it's, it's a funny thing that internet just give everybody a space to kind of express themselves and, uh, some people just kind of use their channel to use this channel to kind of, I don't know what you say, kind of release their bitterness or anger or something like that. I am not quite sure. Like if I see a painting that I don't like, or if I see a, you know, artist that I don't think is that good, like I'm not going to say anything. I'm just, you know, like, I mean, the, the, the worst thing I'll do is just not like the video, but I'm not going to like, sum down the video and actually send out a hate email to them because <laughs> we are all on a different journey right my painting used to look very very bad too and when i see artists trying to get themselves out there even if their work is not that good i really applause to their courage because you're putting yourself out there is open for people to criticize and judge and that's one of the you know, hardest thing for artists because everyone is a critic. I mean, I'm, I am a critic, right? I, I, you know, I criticize painting when I see one. So being an artist is definitely a lot of mental challenge and stuff. I mean, I'm a critic myself. I, you know, when I see painting that are not good, I mean, I will raise my opinion. I mean, I'm not necessary to the artist because I don't want to be disrespectful. But, like, I will tell my wife and I'll let her know why I don't like so and so, like why I don't like the painting or something. But I don't go ahead and start attacking the artist. I mean, it's their, you know, they're still pour their heart and soul out, unless they're copying somebody's Instagram photo and called it their own and put it in a museum selling for a thousand and 
millions of dollars, but another story for another time. Oh, thank you for all the all the words, all the night kind words while I'm rambling. Okay, so we are close to the end. I'm actually really pleased with the painting and thank you guys so much for keeping me company. But before I end this, I really want to paint the white shirt. And there's some nice, beautiful flower patterns on it. And I really want to show you guys. Because this is because that's going to be the fun part. So. All right. So. I'm going to actually use a little bit of pencil because I want to actually. Be a little bit more certain where I'm going to paint. But OK. So. Just gonna grab some water and let's just, you know, a little bit random dots and uh, where the flowers are. And, uh, here, like that. And the flower pattern on her shirt will be perfect with a little bit of carmine and red. So I'm going to paint on where. I wet the paper. Some part will be dry, some part will be wet. And I'm just going to make this nice and beautiful watercolor mark. And it's very loose. And there we have. I don't do still life that much, but maybe I can try. Because in order to do still life, I'll have to set things up, or I'll use somebody's photo. Because I don't, I don't know what to set up. I don't have like nice looking vase and pot in my home. So, okay, so, so the flower stern and leaf. I'm just going to use a little bit of cobalt turquoise and just mix with those. Uh, warm colors that I have and just gonna add those in here okay a little bit of small shape like that okay that's really all I really need I'm not even trying to copy in the pattern I'm just looking at the reference and get those in there And there we have, we kind of replicate the essence of her shirt. Now, after this is dry, I'm going to put another value on top. So it will be, it'll, it'll look a lot more dimensional. Right now it looks kind of flat because the lack of the contrast and value. start to add a little bit of shadow here okay here we have it and uh, a little bit of a shadow here make it a little bit bluer. I want this to be nice and transparent. Translucent. Okay. Yeah, well, maybe we'll definitely do that next time if I can find a good example. Okay. Oops. All right. We're almost till the end. And it makes a nice blue color. Like even if it is in the shadow, let's make it, let's still make it somewhat 
transparent. It's not a black. Okay, it's definitely not a black. So I'm just going to go over it like this. Some of the flower color got lost, so I'll probably need to go back and do some of that again. Okay, I'll keep some light here. There's some bounce light. Um, her chest is cast um, is catching some light, so I want to keep some of that okay and uh, let's get some water and soften some of those edges i need a smaller brush this is way too big i need a clean water Okay, luckily the sink is really close. <laughs> okay, and uh, soften this edge as well. Okay, I think I'll have some dry brush kind of lift off some paint as well. Yeah, she has blue eyes. Um, I actually have to look at her other photos to, to, to make sure she does. So I don't paint the wrong color. But yeah, her blue eyes is probably not this saturated, but so I probably exaggerated a little bit. But uh, yeah, she does have blue eyes. Okay, so I leave this part white. That's not right. It's actually the skin tone underneath. So I'm just going to paint that over. And this. Okay. I think we can give it a little bit of background. Let's see. Hmm. I, I I do like the warm background here, so I'm simply just gonna reuse this. Yeah, so I can also give her chest a little bit of form as well, so it's not going to be just like completely white here. So a little bit of background here. Just gonna grab whatever color I can find here. There we go. Nice and loose, okay, almost graphic-like again. And I think for this part, I, I like it. I like how it kind of just fade off here, but we can give it a little bit of cool value here. Like a nice cool color here. Still very light though. This is, you know, I want to give this feeling of she's kind of based in the light. This is good. I'm gonna blow this in dry. Okay, some final touches and I'm gonna call it a day. So I'm going to mix a nice, some cool gray here, Get a little bit cooler. And uh, I'm just gonna separate her arm a little bit. So what I'm going to do is to give a nice, nice shadow here. 
Okay. And then just soften it with water. And a little bit of form hinting and going on here. And Okay, so that little shadow separates the arm and her body quite well. <laughs> Thank you. No, I'm in Seattle, so I'm unused to the rain. So it's okay. I mean, the like rain doesn't really bother me. It's, my wife gets affected by it a little bit more. She gets a little bit depressed when, uh, when, when it's when there's like consecutive rain for like a week or something. She, yeah, she can get a little bit depressed. What's that? But yeah, I don't, I don't mind the rain that much, like at all. Okay, so I'm coming back and start to add some more. Add some of this flower back. Okay, they start to getting lost when I paint the shadow. So, I mean, I could have painted this later, but I just want a little bit of color to start off with. Okay, some final touches and I'm going to call it a day. And I really appreciate you guys company. It is great to have you guys. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do anything more. But I'll definitely share the final image in the link in the description later. But it was wonderful to have you guys company. Okay, I'm just gonna let it dry. I'm not gonna blow it dry, but here you go. I'm going to here. Here's the finished painting. Okay, I'm putting right next to the photo. It's really weird. I can't really compete with that. The real thing will always win. So. Again, thank you guys for joining me. I actually need to darken this. Okay, when I when I step back, I see some problem with it. This is way too light. Okay, but again, thank you guys for for being here with me. I will see you guys again later. I will post the final image in the description. Hope to see you guys again next time. Bye.